sir. I was born in the United Kingdom to Nigerian parents. My maternal grandfather had six or seven wives, who's counting, and up to 27, <laughs> with five children. Uh, my mother's older sisters did not have an education, but my mother had an elementary and a high school education. However, back in her day, education was not a priority for the women in her family. It was, it was expected that you would get married, have children, and become somebody else's responsibility. My mother's stepbrother was wealthy at the time, and he lived in a big city, what we consider the big city. So he asked my mother to move from the countryside to come and be a nanny to her, to his children in Lagos, Nigeria, for people who will understand that place. Uh, her brother took the bold step and sent her to the United Kingdom, after which she went to uh, school as a secretary and became uh, an employee of the Nigerian High Commission in London. Growing up, I had three goals. I wanted to earn my doctorate, I wanted to be a professor, and I wanted to travel the world. I worked hard, and I received my undergraduate and my first master's degree. I got a job as an assistant professor of African drama at the University of Nigeria. After my master's degree, my father sat me down and he said, now you need to go get married. <laughs> So I did what every obedient child would do. I got married and started a family. I came to the United States in 1992 as a training spouse. And together with my husband, we had three children. However, I was still determined to earn that doctorate. So I went back to school and got my second master's degree. It was a struggle. I had a full-time job and three young children. I rode the train from Northwest Indiana to Chicago. And back to Northwest Indiana at night, I went to school, Monday through Thursday, to Bradstone. In 2014, we relocated to Bentonville, Arkansas, and came to work for Walmart. My daughter was in high school at the time, and she had joined, she had been part of, she had become part of the International Baccalaureate Program. So I decided to take that opportunity that while I would take her to the library, I would use that to also enroll in grad school. So I started a doctorate at the young age of 51. <laughs> I still have those three goals. I have those three goals. I was driven. And I wanted to prove that I could do it not only for me, but for my parents. It became difficult after my father passed in 2017. It didn't make sense anymore. After, but, but I understood and I heard that a few months before he died, he was already telling people, do you know my daughter is a doctor? <laughs> At that point, I wasn't even done. I was two years into the program. <laughs> but in May 2019, I was finally able to earn that degree. I received my doctorate in business administration. <laughs> that he was here. He was here to see it. I tell you my story to encourage you not to allow temporary situations to determine your future or to define you. Not to allow situations to determine the outcome of your lives. Oftentimes, we do not have control over things that happen in our lives. But it does not have to define your path. Other people's perceptions or expectations do not have to define you. I am proud today that we are raising a young, talented, and intelligent daughter, who recently, by the way, became the president-elect of student government of the University of Miami. not to allow those things to keep you from where you need to go. Keep those dreams in your forefront. I still want to be a professor. <laughs> and I still want to travel the world. Now, let me introduce myself. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Abby Adelaide.